so I should be back now. See this thing, the EVGA thing? This is the only way I can keep my computer from crashing in Florida. Florida's hot. It's probably around 80 degrees Fahrenheit in my office right now. GPU temp is 75, 76 degrees Celsius. Pretty hot. So the only way I can keep this damn thing from really overheating, I can set a temp target temp, but it still seems to go over that and then craps out. But a GPU clock offset. I do negative 144 hertz, basically neutering my graphics card a bit. And that seems to keep things running. Yeah, I'm planning on, well, if I had money, I would definitely be uh, installing something to uh, air condition just my office, probably down to 70 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Almost in Celsius. It's like, that's not down. That's, that's a real freaking hot. 7 degrees Celsius is really, really hot Fahrenheit. Anyway, let's see. Browse servers. We were doing pretty good there. Unfortunately, of course, things crapped out. I believe I was talking about the satanic nature of Hitler. I know, I know, you might say, well, Hitler, I did see somebody say, Hitler was not satanic. He just did what he believed was right. You can believe what you're doing is right and still be serving the devil. It's the most important lesson to learn when it comes to looking at the world and how people act. You can believe you're doing absolutely the right thing, but take a step back, and if you are gassing hundreds, thousands, millions maybe, of people, you're serving the devil. Now, not everything you do might not be in servitude to the devil, but you are unknowingly working for the devil. That's one of the things I say a lot, is there's a lot of false Christians in America who are actually satanic. They do not know this. They, of course, think they are serving God. They go to church every Sunday and pray, and they'll pray the loudest and the hardest they can. But when they get home, they go back right to looking at the TV and yelling hate and bile towards anybody who is even slightly different than them. Anybody who alters from their view. Never mind the fact that God made that person as well. Maybe that person is wrong, but should we be throwing such fervor and hatred at them and not trying to help them? If somebody goes ahead and is all for abortion, I'm not exactly sure I agree with this. But that doesn't mean you should shoot up an abortion clinic. You're doing the devil's work. The devil is joyous in the fact that he loves violence. Violence begets violence. He is so happy if you stop his enemy through violence. He doesn't care that one of his puppets has been killed because now he's begun to influence you. He may never influence you again, but he can wait. Everything can wait for him until he has someone else to raise up the flag and do something vile and evil, just as he would please want them to do. Let's see. Let's find a map here. Hopefully not get too high of a ping. There's Black Forest. Uh, we want to... Let's just, just do filters. We're going to set difficulty to hard. And then... Fly. Hostile grounds. It's got people in it. We want to try something with minimal people. City blockade. That little... I don't know what that means. I don't like catacombs. I'll get killed there in two seconds. Husk factory. Let's give that a go. I have no idea what that's like. I, you know, I'm... I'm uh, it failed. Damn. Uh, I, I'm, I'm quite interested in a Nazi zombie army because, of course, I've I've looked at the uh, standard, you know, like uh, Sniper Elite games, and I look at them and I think, oh my god, these look so cool, the zoom-ins, the blood, the gore, it's a primal thing. It might pull back to the second thing almost, but it's a primal thing and it's a video game, so is there really sin there? But then I think, well, I am shooting at Nazis. Nazis were the villains, but not all of them were truly evil. Many of them were conscripted, were basically given no other chance but, or choice but to go into the military. So to blindly kill Nazis in such a joyous manner, is that not slightly off-putting? You look at a game like uh, Wolfenstein, and I can take great joy in that because it's a futuristic Nazi. It's a future where the Nazis have become even more of a parody of themselves when they are almost all truly evil. And, of course, it's not based in a historical setting. If you were to look at... Let's go ahead and switch back up to the gunslinger here. 
look at games that are set in real world World War II era, or World War I era, but World War II is keep with the Nazis, I find it greatly unsettling that so many people look at these games and be overjoyed by it. Because these are real things. These are real wars that happened where real people sat in trenches or in tanks or in battlefields and bled and suffered and hurt. And to have a game that comes out and says, yeah, we're going all for it. You know, it's like awesome battles and recreation and all this stuff. Yes, it all looks very cool. But I doubt the people who are actually there would look back at that and say, boy, was that ever fun watching my friend take a bullet to the head on the beaches of Normandy. Boy, was it ever fun to try to hold in, you know, my buddy's guts as he's bleeding out or to sit there looking down at what used to be my own fucking leg. Such joy, is it not? Such joy? I do not enjoy games based in the real world setting like that because it does a disservice to those people that lived before us, those people who actually did fight in those wars, that did suffer. It's like taking a Sandy Hook shooting and saying, cool, it's now an FPS where you're going to stop the shooter. Except for, of course, you know, if you're not quick enough, all the kids get shot up. Yes, I could see this game being made and being great fun and parody and getting a laugh out of it because it's so sick and funny at the same time. But these things happen. People really did suffer. It seems wrong to take such joy in them. You could make the same argument for any game, even this one. None of these guys were ever really human. It's obviously just a game. The others are obviously just a game. This isn't even based in the real world. It's based in some alternate reality. Where there's zombies and whatnot. And oh, they've been researched on by evil corporations. But you're still using real guns. It's still portraying humanoid figures. Is that not wrong? Is it not wrong to have that drive to pull the trigger and shoot? Maybe it is in some level. But we have to remember it's not real. But the thing about those war games is they advertise themselves on their reality, on the fact that they're based on World War II, on the fact that they're based on these real wars where real men, and sometimes women even, suffered and died. And yes, of course, there weren't really many women at all in any military back then, but you still found women getting trapped in the middle of a battlefield or refusing to stay behind or even dressing up as a man to try and get out on the battlefield every now and again something of that sort throughout history will have happened these were real things to take such blind joy in what was a horrible act seems so wrong to me Thinking about 9-11. You can imagine somebody making a 9-11 simulator where it simulates in slow motion you going into the plane, all the floors bending out of the way, the fire spreading, slowly the fire burns and everything begins melting and falling apart. What's your game? What's the gameplay element? Oh, it's just seeing where you can crash and it simulates the whole building. What a joyous game that is! You can imagine it being quite fun! Ooh, who can crash in the best spot to bring down the Twin Towers the quickest? Except for that's quite sick, isn't it? I have the same feeling of discomfort towards games that are based in real-world situations. A lot of baddies here, and I can't seem to get a good shot in on them. One game recently that really bugged me about that was... Battlefront... Battlefield 1. Did somebody else join this? These enemies have suddenly become much more bullet spongy than the first wave. Also, where's the bloody door? <laughs> but, uh, Battlefield 1. Where the game claims to be historically accurate. It screams, look at me in my historical accuracy. Its fans scream, no, 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 it is World War One. It is absolutely World War One. Definitely World War One. Look at the uniforms, look at all this. Except for, of course, in real war, people wouldn't be wearing their marching uniforms. They wouldn't be have access to all those automated weapons. They wouldn't have that many tanks. Even at the end of World War One, I, I have never heard that they would have that much armored infantry moving about. The most accurate World War One games, armored infantry is that even correct? Armored <clears throat> vehicles moving about. World War One at the start, they were still using horses. By the end of it, yes, it had become much more modern war. But you see that game. 
You see the zeppelins flying low, and that's not how it would have been. The zeppelins would have flown high. The planes! There wasn't that much plane combat in the First World War. Nonsensical. And of course, because of that, I look at it and say, well, this seems like something I could enjoy. It's not really accurate. You get the people fighting in their beautiful, awesome uniforms that look so damn regal, I wish we still had. But it's not accurate. But isn't that a positive in my book? Shouldn't that be a positive that it's not accurate? That it is just about what looks cool and what might be fun rather than creating an accurate thing? Because the more accurate it is, in a way, while still trying to say let's have fun, the more of a disservice it is. If you're saying it's not accurate, if you're saying, look, we took the basic idea of World War I and we made a fun shooter over it, leaving out all of the horror and suffering that was World War I, was the trenches, was the rise of chemical warfare, people's lungs filling with water and them drowning in the trenches in perfectly dry land. Shouldn't that be a positive? But the game's promotional material pushes the idea that the game is closer to World War I, that it is not a fictional world where combat was more enjoyable, that it wasn't a nightmare. It does a great disservice to the actual nightmares of the First World War by saying, yes, this is the First World War. Yes, this is what it was like. People had these awesome uniforms, they had fast combat, and boy was it joyous and fun. Now, the campaign, the story mode, it does try to say, look, it wasn't all fun and games. People died. These were men with families, with mothers back home, sometimes wives and children back home that they never saw again and who never saw them again. The campaign tries to make that point, like with the first mission, where it goes ahead and has you switching between characters and every time you die, it switches to another one. But the gameplay in that is still pretty enjoyable. It's almost more reminiscent of World War II with people charging across and actually making progress. We're in so much of World War I, people sat in their trenches, stared through their sights for months on end, and got nowhere. And the second you forgot that you were in the trench, the second you saw something beautiful and decided to stand up and take a glimpse at it, you got a bolt to your head. I find that game very annoying in that way. I bought it because it was so fun looking because the art is amazing because you look at the gameplay and you think jesus this is fun it's like an alternative universe version of the first world war where it wasn't such a pure blood nightmare and then you hear all the fans of the game scream and shout from the heavens that yes it is world war one it is they did have all of this there it is not an alternative reality version of the game that is what it was of course it wasn't of course, if they've taken liberties to make it more fun, they would do that with anything. But to have them push the idea that, hey, no, this isn't alternative reality, this is kind of really what World War I was like, makes it so much more disheartening. It means that any time I set foot into that game, actually, even when I just tried to press play and got to the menu screen, that's as far as I made it in the game, I've watched footage of other aspects of it, that's why I know about other aspects of it, I've watched a fair amount of it, because it is an enjoyable game. But as soon as I got to just the menu screen, all I could think about were those poor sods in the fracking ditches, suffering, bleeding, dying, gasping, wondering if they'd, all their supplies were in order. Don't forget, you also had trench foot and all that wonderful stuff. From the rotting, mucky ditches that people lived in. No glory in real war. People find it, and they could find it more easily in the past, when that's all there seemed to be in life. Violence and war, and what was the point? Most people didn't have the time to think further, or if they did, what was there to help feed their mind? Help bring them further out of the darkness? Make them less animal? There wasn't much, was there? For a long time, there really was not much. Keeping some money for myself so I can buy another gun. There's another guy coming too. Hat films, yep. I'm about to shut the pod. DJ, yeah, that's Hat films. That's where I absolutely watched a lot of my uh, 
Battlefield 1 footage. Their multiplayer funds. I did watch, um, some of... What do you call it? The Rooster Teeth Achievement Hunter guys playing through the campaign. That's how I know about the campaign area. I didn't get very far into that because, of course, I realized the jovial nature of the game. Even though, obviously, it was trying to be serious. And, of course, you did have Achievement Hunter in their usual joyous way about things. Trying to make it even more fun. You could tell the game itself wasn't succeeding very well at making it very glum. About getting across what a hellish nightmare being in a war zone really was. It's one of the things I've always hated about modern warfare shooters too, ones that put you in, you know, Afghanistan, Iraq, such places as that. Heck, even uh, Counter-Strike. I remember when I tried to play Counter-Strike, I was probably around 15 or so. Can't exactly remember, but I remember 9-11 stayed fresh in my mind for a very long time. Years. I remember getting in there, and of course, it's okay, now it switches sides and you're the terrorists. Well, I didn't want to play as a terrorist. Uh, they just killed 2,000-ish Americans not too long ago. This always happens. As soon as we get more people and it goes to pot. Someone already dead and he left. A weird voice. Wonder if a weekly thing has started. Good job, everybody. Other guy left the game. Thank the maker for that. Wonder if my mic was on, they could hear me complaining about them. Good talk. Go away. Forty nine left. We should probably get back outside. Or they uh, get behind us here. Oh, yep, there they are. Okay, cool. That's painful. Like I said, I should have gotten back outside before they got behind us. I think this will lead us out. There we go. Beep, 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 beep. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, 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 mm. I know. It's always so ironic me talking about all these horrible things in war and how terrible it is while I'm running around playing one of the most gory, violent games out there. But of course, not based in the real world, is it? Reality, a bullet won't cause someone's head to com at least not of this scale, won't cause somebody's head to COMPLETELY disappear. A bullet can have quite the effect on a noggin, but usually it won't make it just disintegrate so. You can't run around with double guns like this. And of course, let's be honest, if you were shooting people in real life, it'd be a lot more horrific and disheartening. And again, none of this is supposed to be based in the real world. An alternative reality. Luckily, it doesn't have PvP. Okay, so they did finally add PvP to the game. Oh, good. We didn't refuel our ammo, did we? We'll be fine. We'll get it sorted. Ah! <laughs> I changed my mind on that gun. Uh, catch. That doesn't really do damage too much, but it does stun. It also found us a collectible. Gonna go back for that pickup over here. See what our uh, teammates have left us. It is. What the frack? Oh, it's a shotgun. Hello, friends! How do you do? Good, there's no flesh pounds, there's just lots of little things. Uh oh, that's a missile coming at me. No, 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 no. Vomit on me. <laughs> but yeah, I cannot stomach battle field one. I like my violent games, clearly, obviously. Look at what I'm playing. 
But the closer you try to push towards a real incident, the more I do not want to play it. The more I feel it is a disservice to that real incident. Yeah, we're good to use some more ammo here. And that one woman is not wanting to go down. We luckily picked up some ammo there. Shame we didn't switch to our other weapon before picking it up, though. Go off before she screams! Good. She still survived. I was thinking about what those sirens are wearing. It's quite the nightmarish thing, isn't it? Because their arms are actually bound right here and here. They're actually like uh, those little metal things holding them in place. It's a pretty horrific thing. Imagine that. Your arm's permanently stuck there. Their mouth is open with like a metal thing sticking out of it. And we'll finish up the shotgun. Jesus, she's got some uh, survivability, doesn't she? Miss, please. Thank you. Back to our guns here. Grab some more ammo. <laughs> How are you still walking? Ah. Anyway, I am feeling a bit more relaxed now. I got that rant out of my blood. Usually the only people who hear me rant are uh, politicians, because whenever, let's say, Donald Trump urges you to call your politician and do something, I will call them. I called them yesterday after he had urged people to call their politicians. Uh, let's go back to that MLG. MLG? LMG. There we go. Cool. Look back to you and reload. Change our perk, actually, to commando again. Like I said, I don't think we'll survive with the other one. Make sure we up our ammo all the way, and we're good to go. Another gun down there. And it doesn't really matter where we are. It means we're probably going to be playing Ring Around the Rosie with a boss here in a second. But yeah, the other day Trump had urged people to call their politicians, their congressmen, and go ahead and tell them to have a stable military budget to approve, actually, the increased military spending budget, I believe it was what it was, and to uh, approve the Republican health care plan. I called both of my uh, congressmen and left them both at least about a two to five minute message about how I would like them to have a stable military budget, because a stable military budget is reasonable. That way they know how much they can and cannot exert, but not to ex ex mm, extend increase the military budget so we already have the biggest military in the entire world our biggest navy in the world what is it next three nations combined would equal our navy that means we have to basically make enemies with russia china and i think it was a european nation just for them to equal us not my babies he screams i almost feel sorry for him almost By the way, if you're unaware of why this guy goes, uh... Oh, that's gonna hurt us a lot. Ow, not good. That's all of our armor gone. Hey, gun! Gun! You need to run away. You usually run away around this point. There we go. I'm gonna stabilize myself. I don't think we can get a... If you get a good line on him, you can actually kill him before he heals, but I can never seem to get a good line on him. Alright. Ring around the rosy here is where we will play. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, come forth, enemies. Fight me. And he's back. You're the one who keeps running away. You are aware of this, right? Like, you're the one who just ran away. You come back. Okay, now I've run. But about a foot. Oh, uh, that was Bullfingle. Ah, bugger. That should be it, I think. Because he gets a little... He's less inclined to run away every time. So hopefully now he won't run away again. Lost my train of thought of what I was talking about. He's, of course, the battle got a bit intense there. Earlier I was talking about, um... Sniper Elite. And the fact that it does catch my attention. But I have thought about playing... Oh, and I also went into the uh, fact that aspects of it seem a little 
unsettling because it is based in the real world. I think that's actually what got us onto the whole real world thing. The games I avoid and all that. Oh, that's going to really hurt. We got lucky. Oh, he's doing airborne strikes. No, we might die. We died. I forgot he does airborne strikes. I'm used to fighting him inside. Anyway, um, Sniper Elite Zombies. The Nazi Zombies. I might play through that because it's an alternative reality. You have the greatest villain, or at least one of the greatest villains of all time. Some people actually make the argument Stalin killed more people over time. Ugh, and he did quite a bit under the guise of the betterment of the country and the people. Very sickening. But, um... Oh, little kills. Tons. But, uh... Yeah, I might play Nazi zombie snipers, because... Well, Nazis, in theory, all bad. Really, there were good ones, but... In theory, all bad. But they're zombies! And you get the Schustet, the Hitler man, that's not really the Hitler man, because, of course, you should never take joy in killing anybody. In real life. Anyway, I'm done for this evening. That was my rant. Um, I do feel a bit more relieved. And like I said, I did call my Congress people. I told them to uh, not increase military spending, just to find a stable point, and to uh, put forward a single payer healthcare system. Not just any healthcare system, not just to remove the Obamacare, otherwise known as the ACA, without putting forward anything else. Let's go for a single payer system, because that's the way it should be. If you want to dare claim it to be a Christian nation, actually act like you care about the people in the nation. Anyway, that's that. Thanks a bunch, everybody, for watching, and, um, yeah. See you all next time. I need to get that out of my blood. <laughs> Ta-ta. Maybe later we'll play Hollow Knight. Right now I'm going to go work on some fan art for Hat Films. What? What? Hat Films fan art? Oh, but you're a YouTuber. You shouldn't be talking about uh, making fan art for another YouTuber. Well, guess what? I like Hat Films. They're raunchy and uncivilized and... Sometimes seem like horrible human beings, but it's mostly meant in jest. Mostly. Sometimes I do get a little bit <laughs> at them when they talk about killing hamsters or dogs. Alright, see you guys around. Ta-tas.